Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another episode of our Unity 2D tutorial series where we're taking a look at all the basic things that you need to make your own awesome 2D game and have some fun jumping around all over the place. So yeah, in today's episode we're going to take a look at scrolling backgrounds or parallax backgrounds, which basically it means so that you have something in your background behind you and it moves at a different pace to the way the player is moving. So if you move move to the right, the background will move to the right as well, but slower, so it gives a kind of impression of things being in the distance behind you. Uh, so if we're going to do that though, we're going to need some backgrounds to put in place. So in the file that's linked down below this video and has been linked since the very first episode, there's now an additional file in there. Uh, if we open this up here, there's this little background mountains that we've got. So what we're going to do is go into our art folder here and where we have our, our sprites and stuff already. We're going to drag this in and drop it in there. So now we've got background mountains. You can use whatever you want as your own backgrounds, of course, but for now, this is what we're using here. So we need to set the same settings we have for our other stuff. So we have 16 uh, pixels per unit and stuff like that. So we're going to go here and put that to 16, not 16,000. Um, we'll change this to multiple. Uh, we go point because we're using pixel art. And the size of it is 256 by 256, so we'll use that as our max size. And um, we'll set it to true color, and we apply that. And we'll go into our sprite editor here, and we'll draw ourselves some mittens, or draw around these mittens. So they're black, and they've got a little white line around them, so you want to make sure you have space around one little white pixel around either side. So they're fine, that's tall enough, perfect. And we'll draw this one here. Should be the right height and just down one. Oh, oh, then I drew an extra one. Oh, okay, we can just drag this extra one that I made by accident. Um, we'll put that around about there. We we'll line it up properly now in a second. I think that should be the right height. So that's perfect there. That's the tallest point, and it's perfect, and it's right over here as well. So there we go. We'll apply those changes, and now we've got ourselves some background mountains that we can put in place, and we need to put them in place somewhere in our level. So we're going to just pop them in the background here. So what we're going to do is, we're just first of all, we're just going to drag all these out onto the scene. So we'll just drag them down to here, like that. Perfect. And we're going to have, or what we're going to create is like two layers of mountains in the background. And obviously at the moment, like we can see that they're appearing over our level. That's not what we want at all. So we're going to rearrange them. Um, so what we're going to do first is create a new object, so create empty, and we'll just call this background, just for easiness sake, and if we right click on that and click create empty again, it'll create a child object, and we'll rename that to background near, and we'll do the exact same thing again, create another empty child, and we'll call this background far. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these objects, so the, the bottom one should be the long one here. Whichever one is the long one that you've dragged in. We'll drag that down into far, because we want that to be further away. And we'll drag the other two into near, because they're going to be closer. And then on, on our certain, on our sprite render component here, we're going to set the order of these so they'll appear behind everything. Everything else is set on zero on the order in layer. Uh, we could create another sorting layer and layer, layer things up that way, but just to keep it nice and simple, we're just going to say minus one for these guys so you can see they've already immediately popped behind there and for the other one here we're going to set this to minus two so that one will always be behind these other guys here uh, and now we just want to line these up a little bit better so if we zoom in here so we grab our big one and we'll put it and we'll put it down around there say and we'll grab the other two guys and we want them to be the at the same height of, as this thing if not slightly lower so we'll just grab the first one and holding V to grab a corner, we'll move it over and lock it onto the corner there, and we'll just kind of drag it down slightly, and then we'll do the exact same with the other guy. Drag it over, hold V, and we'll lock it into place there. So it lines up perfectly with that guy. So now we have our mountains in the background like that, but these aren't enough mountains, obviously. We don't want them just at the very start. We want them all the way along. So we're just going to... You probably want to like space things out differently and stuff like that, but we're just going to make it nice and simple here for now. So we'll just select both of these things, hit Control and D to duplicate them, then drag them over to the like there, say. Same again, drag them over to about there. Same again, 
drag them over to about there and we'll just drag a few off the end of the level as well and we'll actually we'll just drag an extra one just back at the start just in case you never know what kind of amount of area the player might be able to see uh, and we'll do the exact same thing with the further back one we'll just move it over to the left here and we'll duplicate it drag it over duplicate it drag it over duplicate it drag it over duplicate it and one more time there we go so we've got our mountains in our background but if we if we press play here now what we'll see is that the background stuff just moves all the exact same as as we're moving the character along you can see the mountains move the exact same it just oh i don't know what's going on there hmm interesting i don't know what was causing that <laughs> anyway <laughs> um We've got a bit of an issue here, actually. Oh, I, when we created our time system in a previous episode, we made a a um, a change in all the levels, and for some reason on this level now it's duplicated our time system. So we'll delete the one that's not supposed to be in there. So now that should make everything run okay. Okay, but yeah, the backgrounds aren't scrolling at all. We're not getting any kind of effect going on. So. There's a couple of ways you can deal with this now. We're going to handle it through scripting, but there is another way you could do it, which is by changing the type of camera that you're using. So if we take our backgrounds, at the moment everything is on the same layer. So if we turn to 3D here and we move around, we can see everything is like on the exact same line in in our level. Uh, so there'll be no like, so everything's just like there so you know where it is uh, but if we do this if we go to our background near and we set the z to 10 on background far we set the z to 20 and if we switch back to 3d again now you can see they've moved out into the distant horizon like that and if we go to our camera which is here and instead of the projection being orthographic if we switch it to being perspective and we hit play Now if we move, now you can see the backgrounds are different, they're, they're moving slightly differently, you can see as you jump even they're doing something different. I'm not a big fan of this kind of like when you jump, the backgrounds have this extreme movement as well, kind of makes them look, some, makes them look a bit weird. But another problem this causes now is if we make this full screen here, um, if you're doing a game where the pixels, you want them all to be the same size, if you do this then all the pixels in the distance are going to be badly resized so you'll have to make everything bigger and you have to work out based on their exact positions um in the distance how much scale you need to give them so they appear perfectly on the screen for you which is obviously incredibly complicated and not something you really want to have to deal with so instead we're going to do a much simpler method which is to do into scripting so we'll turn this back to autographic again so you can see the mountains are back to being the full size that we want and we'll just keep these backgrounds just minimized like this and we'll go to our scripts folder and we're going to create a C sharp script and call it parallax and we'll open this up up in mono develop hopefully this is still set to the right setting yes it is okay <laughs> um so we're going to need a few things here and this is going to be slightly more complicated than some of the other scripts we've done but at the same time it's very straightforward and if you just follow along with it, it you should be able to get it pretty well so we've looked at using arrays in a, in a previous episode which is where you create a system that holds a whole bunch of objects for you so we're going to use a couple of them here now in this so we're first we're going to say a public transform and we're going to make this an array of transforms so then it'll take in a whole load of transforms um, or however many we want anyway uh, so if we transform backgrounds and basically this is what's going to store uh, what backgrounds we're using so here we have our background near and a background far we could have it store every single individual object but what we want to do is just grab the whole layer of all of these and it'll move the layer along all in a big bunch which is super duper handy uh, nope that's the wrong thing um and then we're going to do private float again and we're going to make this another array of objects so it'll be an array of float numbers so public float or pr sorry private float 
parallax scales. And what parallax scales will do will basically determine how much um, each individual background layer has to move in relation to how much the camera or the player is moving. Uh, and we're going to add another value here, public float smoothing. And this will be something that you can use to like make the backgrounds move faster or slower, depending on which way you want to have it. So we'll also need to have a private transform and we'll call this cam and this will be like, the, so we can take a uh, note of the position of the camera and then private vector tree previous, previous cam pause so pause for position so the way this is going to work is it's going to loop through every every frame of the game and what it'll say is we have the previous camera position and then with the transform of the camera we also have the com current camera position and it'll say okay what is the difference between where the camera was and where the camera is now and we're going to move the background by that much of the difference so then it knows to be able to move the background as you're moving and the camera is moving with you. So in our start function here, we're going to need to find the cam we're going to need to set the camera up. So our camera, our transform, what we're going to say here is just camera dot main. So that'll find the main camera in this in the level. Camera dot main dot transform. So we'll get the transform of that. We've only got one camera active, and that that's nice and handy. So it's a quick, simple way to find the camera. And then our previous camera position will be uh, just cam dot position. So we found straight away here, we found what the camera is. And now we're just going to say the first position is where the camera starts off. So our parallax scales then. So we've set up this array here, but we haven't set how big this array is going to be. And we want to set that based on however many backgrounds we have in our transform. So what we're going to say here is parallax scales is equal to new float because we, it's a because parallax scales is a float array already. So we're making a new float array, and inside of these little brackets here, we want to set the length of the array, and the length of that will just be the the length of our backgrounds array. So backgrounds dot length will be what we use there. So now we have our parallax scales is set up to the right length and size of the amount of backgrounds that we have. But we need to fill in some values in there. So we're going to do a little for loop here. So oops, not an offer, I don't know what that is. Um, so the way for loops work is that like they'll keep repeating over time. I think that, I don't think we've used the for loop in the in any of our scripts so far. But basically how they work is they just keep repeating as long as a given statement is true. So basically what we say is at the start of it, we have like three little spaces we fill in here on our loop. So we go, the first bit is establishing um, whatever variable we're going to be using. So for int i equals zero. So what that does is it creates an int i and it just sets it with a default value of zero. And then we, we have to make sure and use a semicolon here rather than just like a comma or anything like that. And what we're saying is, so the eye is set up there. So this next little section here is checks what needs to be true. So we want our eye to be less than background, backgrounds dot length. So while eye is less than whatever length, whatever the size of the backgrounds array is, I plus plus. So what this will say is, so we'll say, say we come here, say we have a uh, tree, or well, we have two backgrounds in our array. So our backgrounds transform array up here has two bits in it. So then in our loop, it'll go int i is equal to zero. i is less than backgrounds dot length, which is two. So we know that a zero is less than two, obviously. So it'll add one onto that. So it'll change i equals to one, and then it'll execute whatever little bit of code we put in here. And then once it finishes executing that, rather than moving on to the rest of the script, it'll bounce back up to here and it'll go, okay, i is now one. That's still less than backgrounds.lent. Add another one on and do the code. And it'll pop back up here again. 
and say okay i is two okay that's no longer less than that so we won't execute whatever's in here and then we can just move on to the rest of our scripts uh, hopefully that makes sense anyway um but yeah in here what we're going to say is our parallax scales is basically just going to be based off of the z value of our backgrounds so here we put background near we put it to 10 and we put the background far to 20 so they have a bit of distance on them and you can move them back and forward and this was really handy about this little script is you can move them around and forward so that it makes things move at different speeds depending on where they are in relation to the backgrounds uh, oops, that's the wrong thing again uh, so basically we say parallax scales for i so whether that's be zero or one or whatever uh, parallax scales i is equal to backgrounds i which is our transform values so trans so basically it's like background i which is transform dot position dot z and we need to multiply this by minus one just to make sure it kind of it, it has to be multiplied by minus one just to fix the weird error that can occur if you don't do that uh, so make sure and stick that in there <laughs> so then in our update loop here now we have uh, our parallax scales values are automatically filled up so uh, at position zero it'll be minus 10 and at position two it'll be minus 20 from what we're using in our system already so our update loop here now is what we're going to be using what the game will be using the whole time as it's going through um, we're going to set another little for loop in action here because we want to cycle through all the backgrounds again so we're going to do the exact same thing so for int i equals zero and again while i is less than backgrounds dot length if i can spell and again i plus plus so again we have our little open and close brackets and we're going to put some code in there now in a second but we're just going to add another little line down here so we have our camera and we have our previous camera position and basically at the end of every loop what we want to do is say our previous camera position is now equal to cam dot position uh, and there's one other small change we want to do here instead of having void update what we want to have is void late update and what that does is because we have our camera scripts uh, our camera controller script so we can see here in our update and in that that's following the player in the update loop but sometimes the order in which scripts execute can get a little bit messed up so you might end up with your backgrounds jumping around all over the place because the camera script is moving after the parallax script and that's not what we want to happen so we want to make sure that our parallax script only happens after the camera so late update is always called after update on every frame of action in the game so we want to do everything here in in late update so now in our for loop basically what we want to do is this will be the system that moves our parallax in the round for us so we're going to create a new float and we're going to call this parallax and parallax this will be the amount of movement that we want to have going on basically so parallax will be equal to our previous camera position dot x minus our current camera position dot x as well because we're only moving in the x value you can move in the y value as well if you want to and it'll just be adding the same bit of code extra onto it but i don't think that looks good in, in 2d platformer games in general um, and we want to multiply that by the parallax scale that we're currently active on with our int i and we'll move on to the next line and so now we have the amount of movement that we want to have on that particular background layer and we want to set a new target position for the background to move to now so float uh, background this background target position x is equal to backgrounds i dot position dot x 
plus parent x. So basically what that does is gets the x position of where, oh no, not, not plus parallax. Um, yes, if it is plus parallax if it can spell it properly, that's what the problem is there. Um, so basically what that does is gets the current x position of where the layer is and it just adds on the amount that we want it to move. So then what we want to do now is create a vector tree and we're going to call this background target position is equal to new vector tree and we're going to put in our new background target position that we just created and then we're going to just use the values that are already there for our y value and our and our z value so backgrounds dot position dot y and then backgrounds i dot position dot z wrap that up and close it now you could just you could do all of this you could add this little section and just put it in here if you wanted to but this is just to like spread everything everything out and make it nice and straightforward and obvious so now we've got a, a new value that we want to move everything to so we instead of doing anything else we're just going to go backgrounds i dot position oh no dot position if we can spell things and what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to move the background from whatever position is currently in to where you want to move it to. So what we're going to do for this is a vector tree dot lerp. Um, and vector tree dot lerp will simply just move uh, our background in a kind of a smooth action. It won't like jump it from place to place. It'll kind of create an, an, an amount for it to like smoothly move along, which is kind of what, which is just perfectly what we want. So what uh, lerp takes in is a vector tree to go from and a vector tree to go towards and a value for it to move uh, for how much it should move in a given time. So vector tree dot lerp will be backgrounds uh, background yeah backgrounds i dot position and we'll move towards our background target position that we just created right here uh, and what we're going to do is take our smoothing value that we created up above and multiply that by time that delta time so this means we'll be able to have with our smoothing value we will be able to have some control over how much the backgrounds move uh, when the player uh, moves the camera so there we go so we'll wrap that closed and I think yeah that should be working now perfectly fine so we'll pop back into the game here and we need to set this up so it runs okay now. And once it finishes um, compiling down here, there we go. So we'll go to our main camera. We'll add our parallax onto him. Um, and we're gonna grab our background near and drag it onto the backgrounds there and it'll pop it in. And same with backgrounds far, pop it in there. We're going to put our smoothing to one. And now, if we hit play, we haven't got any errors anyway. So now our mountains, we can see they're all there. And if we move, now the mountains move along nicely with us. You can see as we go along, everything's kind of the backgrounds are moving along, and they're kind of a bit jumpy at the moment. So we'll change the smoothing. Try five, say. You can see if the if you put the value up, it kind of moves a lot faster around. So we'll try a smaller movement. So there we go. Now it looks a bit smoother. The backgrounds are moving a little bit. You can see in the scene view up here. You can see how the mountains and stuff are moving. So they're moving in relation to, to the level, but to to the player playing the game, it looks like the whole world is kind of moving along so there you go that's the basics of how to add a parallax and script to your game and make everything kind of look a little bit more alive and a little bit more lively so there you go i'll be back soon with some more tutorial goodness and in the meantime keep on making an awesome game 
Thanks for watching this episode and if you'd like to see just how some of the concepts we've covered can be brought together into a fully fledged game then head to portalnauts.com and check out the demo for my game that I've been working on for the last while. Uh, it uses a lot of the concepts we've covered so far in the series as well as other things that we're going to cover in the future. So if you want to get a feel for where we're going and what kind of things you can make with these kind of, with the basics of Unity, um, head over there, try out the game for yourself and let me know what you think of it of course. And the best place to let me know is to head to Twitter at games plus james say hi i'm always there ready to say hello and do stupid things but also if you'd like to see some of the game being worked on and developed in in real time head to twitch.tv slash games plus james where i regularly stream development of the game and you can get to see behind the scenes of how things all work so head there say hello and i'll see you all in the near future